you know, unfortunately, and I, I've not been looking forward to this part of a show all day, to be honest with you, because it, it's not pleasant to talk about. I wish we could be talking about Haley Deegan in a little more positive light right now, but we have to be honest. We have to be objective. I don't, I don't think this was much of a surprise either. You know, when you look at where that car has been running this year, when you look at how she ran last year in the truck series, you know, you can make the equipment excuse all you want. I'm, I'm sure AM racing is not Stuart Haas and we'll get into, you know, what's going on with Stuart Haas right now in just a moment as well. But, um, you know, when you, when you look at what she did uh, with her opportunity with David Gillen racing in trucks and at Thor Sport last year, I mean, her teammate Ben Rhodes won the championship. You know, you, you, there's absolutely no way you can make the equipment excuse for, for her truck ride last year. And that was her third year in the series. So that's why I think some people were a little surprised to see her move up. Others thought that she just needed a culture change and Xfinity was the next logical step. And that I, I understand that part of it as well. But, you know, this was only her fourth top 20 in 12 starts to, to start the year. You know, she's outside the top 20 twice as much as she's in it. And it's it's quite frankly not good enough. Yep. Now, Haley Deegan is going to Portland next weekend. Ben and Joe, you both will be there. However, she won't have veteran crew chief Joe Williams as the team AM Racing has parted ways. Now, Matt Lucas, the team competition director, will be on top of the pit box for the time being. So, Ben, starting with you, 12 races in, her best finish is 12th. Do you believe this move was needed? I mean, I mean again, it, I, I suppose it doesn't hurt, but I don't know that this is a situation where you can look at it and say, well, if you just change who's on top of the pit box, that's going to be the magic switch that turns everything around. You know, she, she's she been with David Gillen's truck team. Like I just said, she's been with Thor Sport, and you know, Thor Sport put three of their trucks in the playoffs last year, and she only had two top tens the entire season. And here she is now with uh, AM Racing and Xfinity, and, uh, you know, best finish of 12th, like you mentioned, Aisha uh, Talladega. You know, her best finish on a non-super uh, speedway track is 15th of Las Vegas, which was the only track she came into this year having run an Xfinity race at before. You know, it's, it's just it's it's very hard for me to see. And and I hope she goes out and proves me wrong. I mean, I want to be clear. I, I wish nothing but the best for her. And, uh, you know, it, again, I wish I wish we didn't have to be talking about her in this uh, negative of a light right now. But, we, you know, we just have to look at the results and look at the performance and compare it to the expectations. And, you know, the uh, conversation surrounding her when she won those less series races and then to a lesser extent in Arca with some uh, strong performances here and there. It just, you know, I, I've been saying on this show, I feel like for. A couple of years now you know at some point in the national series trucks or xfinity or cup or whatever you have to show that the potential remains there to take that next step forward and blossom into a star of this sport and unfortunately the results just haven't been there i again suppose making a crew chief change you know couldn't hurt you know you just kind of throw different uh setups or ideas at the situation maybe you see a slight uptick in performance but it's not a situation where I feel like that alone is going to make enough of a difference at this point. So we'll see, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it in just a moment, but I think her, her future is going to kind of be at a crossroads after the season, unless we finally see that step taken forward and uh, uptick in performance finally come to fruition. And that's the key to this is we know Ford is really supportive of Haley Deegan, especially after she had success in the NASCAR Canada West series, then came out to trucks and originally my thought was, okay, she's coming into the Xfinity series. We know on grid encore been taught you and Brad have talked a lot about the racing to how sometimes a lack of respect, maybe that change in the scene with the Xfinity series could do the difference. It hasn't really seemed to do so. Now I know last year AM racing, they had essentially, you know, the number 25 Brett Moffitt. They have some top tens there. But Haley Deegan is just, we know it's a rookie season. It's just not showing there. And I feel this is just an attempt to, well, let's see if maybe this works. Will it work? It's really hard to say. And especially we're coming to Portland, a very unique road course with little to no elevation changes, some sweeping corners. Handling is going to be something else. I think it's not going to be a pleasantly good weekend result-wise. I love to be wrong and see like all of a sudden, hey, Haley Deegan's top 20, maybe top 10s in case it gets chaotic and you survive overtime. But I think this is just a move where it's like, OK, we're just trying this. It's just see if we could get something. Maybe there's something we don't know. Maybe just the chemistry between her and the crew chief was just not there. But like you said, from the truck series, we weren't seeing that whole lot of progress. 
We're not seeing that. I think it now is we need to start doing something, try to turn it around because Portland is the 13th race. We got 33 left of the year, so we're getting down to the final 20. Yeah, Joe, just to, to bounce off of that real quick, um, I keep an eye on her at Sonoma because she she sat on pole there in the West Series uh, several years back, and that was a field that included a couple of cup drivers, and that was five years ago. So we know she's you know progressed as a driver and uh, has a lot more experience uh, now than she did then. Portland, I think, a little bit more of a wild card just because mm-hmm. of uh, the lack of experience there as well. But, you know, again, Joe, to your point about the equipment, I, I would be – I'd give that a little bit more benefit of a doubt if it weren't for the fact that we have – you know, even though it's a single car this year, we have Brett Moffitt's results from last year to go off of. And I know Brett's a truck champion and a very good driver in his own right, but, um, you know, it shows what that car is capable of. And then, again, the, the truck series last year, you know, you, you can talk about, you know, people said David Gillen's kind of a B team. Again, you know, Thorsport won the championship with Ben Rhodes. You know, Ty Majeski made the playoffs. Matt Crafton made the playoffs. Haley Deegan was down in 19th in points. I mean, it's just, it's it's very hard to, overlook that and you know make the equipment argument there when you have teammates uh in the playoffs and women even went on to win the title so again you know I, I i hope that it turns around i hope that this move you know at least you know if it's not a total fix all sort of solution here for all of their problems it at least kind of ignites a spark that maybe gets them headed in the right direction but again i, I feel like it, it's going to take a lot more than just a crew chief change to really turn a team around and start turning that car into some a, an organization and a, a team and a driver that can compete for top tens and top fives and be a playoff contender in the Xfinity series. So Tuesday was announced that Stuart Haas racing was shutting down. Many originally thought that she would be on track to join Stuart Haas. Now Ford have very few teams and in the cup series, there are few opportunities. Penske has three drivers. None of them seem to be leaving soon. RFK is a two car operation. Front row is a two car team rumored to be expanding to three. Plus they have an open seat with McDowell leaving. Now Rick Ware Racing is a two-car team with Justin Haley and the 15 being shared with three drivers and the Wood Brothers are a single-car team. So Emily, Joe, and Ben, how has the news complicated the road to the Cup Series for Haley D? Sure, and I, I want to go back to some of um, Joe and Ben's points of our perception of this um, uh, this crew chief change is very much like, well, it can't hurt, but internally, you just that team is having really, really huge desperation to do anything they possibly can to bring about change. Um, because understandably, I don't think anyone at AM Racing thought that Haley would be down in 26 in the points, um, just like none of us. Um, anyone in the NASCAR community, racing fans across the world would think that the powerhouse that Stuart Haas Racing is would be shutting down its racing operations at the end of this season. Um, so truly a, a huge shock came out yesterday to not only racing fans, as I mentioned, but certainly Haley Deegan, because there was a clear path for her given the alliance between AM Racing and Stuart Haas. And now amongst all of the the chaos that has to be going down uh, with, you know, not only the cars in the Xfinity series, and not to mention that is the current champion in the Xfinity Xfinity series with Stuart Haas Racing. But now there are going to be four displaced uh, Cup Series cars that are going to be looking for other homes. So it's really unfortunate that the somewhat clear path is washed away for Haley. And she is not only going to be struggling just as a potential rookie trying to enter the series, but she's going to be competing against all of those seasoned drivers now looking for new homes. So I, I do think it is a bit early to confidently predict where she could be ending up. Um, but I do think growing her popularity and as Ben mentioned, her undeniable talent, she should continue to be part of the Cup Series conversation. But with that, just a, a huge, huge blow to her efforts. Uh, and I do want to just say a, a really huge, devastating news to all of the men and women that work at Stewart Haas Racing off of the racetrack. I, I really feel for them. And I'm sure that they, too, are feeling equally as desperate when they are trying to evaluate what their career is going to look like after the end of this year. So a, a huge, unfortunate situation for everybody involved. Yeah. This news from Stuart Haas Racing has a huge ripple effect, not just from the employees, but the drivers. 
even when it comes to the landscape of the NASCAR Cup Series. I know right before we went on the air, Front Row made an announcement that they're expanding. It's just been one of those deals. It's been hard to follow. And for Haley Deegan, while we know Ford has been very supportive of her career, getting her up, especially with what we're seeing right now, we are going to be seeing some changes with the crew chief. We'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, you have other drivers with Ford back in, Riley Herbs, Cole Custer, the defending champion. They're going to be wanting to look up, get an opportunity into the Cup Series with Ford. This just really makes it really complicated. And I think for Haley Deegan, it's going to be easier for somebody to say, let's look at Riley Hurst, what he's done to number 98. Cole Custer, does he deserve a second chance? And where do they go? Potentially the Wood Brothers. We know that's been rumored with their silly season, their driver situation front row with their third car this has just made it where i think we've talked about in the past toyota their driver development seems to always have a roadblock issue when it gets to the cup series now ford has that mess right now i think with ford it's going to have a hard time trying to figure out okay we got drivers that were developing Haley deegan where does she fit in the picture that just makes it really hard and just one of those tough deals where this just has a huge triple effect across the NASCAR industry. Yeah. I mean, it's unfortunate and you know, you, you hate it for everybody who works at Stuart Haas. Um, you know, obviously that was where uh, Danica Patrick made the vast majority of her uh, cup series starts in her career. Um, so you hate to see that team go, but you know, again, I, I don't have too much to add to, to this particular question because you know, it, if, if Deegan were running a little bit better than she is, you know, I mean, I, I think we can have that conversation. Like, this is probably the next logical landing place for a Ford performance development driver in Xfinity. But, you know, like we just talked about earlier in this segment, I mean, she's, you know, I think Emily said it, you know, 26 in points right now. There's there's one driver in the whole Xfinity series that has run every race this year that's lower than her in points. That's Blaine Perkins in 28th. Eric Almarola and Ryan Truex, granted, they both won races and, you know, stage points factor into that now more than ever, but they both only run five of the 12 races so far, they're 18th and 25th in points right now, respectively. So I, I just feel like, again, the, the conversations would be, would be different if you were running better. And obviously, you know, it, it's another blow in, on top of the difficult uh, season that she's having so far. But again, when you, just, you look at it objectively, I don't think too many cup teams, you know, are going to have their eyes on the 26th place driver in the Xfinity standing. So that that's goal number one for her, obviously, is to improve her results. And if we see that, when we see that, you know, we'll see, you know, front row expanding, like you mentioned, Joe, that could be a landing place. We've seen Rick Ware's team take some steps forward. They've now got an alliance with RFK. They seem to be running better than ever. So I do think, you know, these charters are going to land somewhere and opportunities will open up, but are they going to look at Haley Deegan over a Cole Custer or a Riley Herbster, you know, maybe even a Ryan Sieg right now? I, I don't know, but the answer to that is yes. 